Mr. Crosby, this is the first time you've done situation comedy on television, isn't it? That's true, Joan. Yeah. How do you feel about it? Well, it was a very um, enriching experience because uh, it gave me an opportunity to do something different every week and to work with some new people. I won't say it was easy because the hours were long. You haven't got much time to uh, uh, waste standing around. We uh, shot a film in three days. We tried to average that, and we uh, came very close to doing it. Mm -hmm. And we started working in uh, August and didn't get through to February. Now, you did say once that no entertainer who's in everyone's home once a week can survive for long. Have you revised that opinion? I, I guess I'll have to. But uh, this is just going to be for one year. But I think uh, I, I could enlarge on that and say that uh, if he was in one's home once a week for several years, let's put it that way. Mm. Now, coming from films into television work, um, does this mean you're not going to do any more films? No, I'm on my way to do one now. Stagecoach at 20th Century Fox, a remake of the, the old classic that uh, John Ford directed, and I think it was the picture that launched uh, John Wayne into mm -hmm. stardom. And I'm playing the bibulous uh, doctor. Well, which do you prefer working in? The hectic television studios or more relaxed atmosphere of film? Well, that, I would never want to do a series again. Uh, Although we did have a good crew and we had a lot of fun, it, it's just uh, too confining. You just can't think of it doing anything else. Uh, when you're through at 7, 30, 8 o'clock, by the time you've had dinner, uh, it's bedtime because you have to get up again at 6. And uh, five days a week uh, for six months, that is a little confining. I think uh, a spectacular on television, you know, a big musical show with uh, singing and dancing stars, uh, that's all right, three or four of those a year. And I plan to do uh, nine uh, Hollywood Palace shows. Does that come over here, the Hollywood Palace? It's a variety show like Ed Sullivan, mm. and I'll MC it. That's easy. That's two or three days' work for each show. Mm. But in a situation comedy, which is sort of acting television, do you find television is a different um, skill than films? Well, they settle for much less uh, in the way of quality in the situation comedy and television because they don't have the time with the budget. Uh, a film, they, they take more time uh, because they want to get the quality. But uh, prices, uh, production costs being what they are in television, yeah, they just can't mm. waste time fooling around. They have to go. Well, of course, we've been seeing you, I don't know whether you know this, in the road films which are going out on BBC television oh. at the moment. <laughs> and uh, this was the start, wasn't it, of your famous partnership with Bob Hope? Mm, well, I know him before. We played theatres together. In the early 30s, he was a stand-up uh, monologist and I was a singer. And, uh, so, and we knew one another before that. Yeah. But that was the first time we worked together, was in the Road to Singapore. And this is where you hit on this tremendous uh, partnership um, gimmick, if you like to call it, yeah. of um, mutual insult. Uh -huh. Has it ever got out of hand? No, no, it's just, you know, it's a rib, a gentle, gentle sort of a rib. Uh, we're very good friends, and I have a lot of admiration for him. He's done uh, tremendous things for people and for humanity all over the world, and uh, let alone the entertainment that he's provided. He's done so many great things. Uh, in a humanitarian way that I think he's a, an outstanding person. It's a pretty close fought battle of wits in these road films. Does he always come out on top? Oh, he's a little funnier, uh, quite a bit funnier than I am. A little more adroit, shall we say, at the beau mot. Um, now, your name isn't really Bing, is it? Harry. Well, how did the Bing come about? Oh, way, way back, I guess, when I was a child, there was a comic strip called the Bingville Bugle in our newspapers. And there was a character named Bingo in there. And somehow or another they called me Bingo, and then they knocked off the O, and now I'm Bing. So it's been Bing since you were very small. Since I baby, yes, yeah, since I was a child. Now the other tab is, of course, the classic old groaner one. Where did that come from? Tommy Dorsey hung that on me, I think. The band leader. Oh, yes. That, that yeah. arose out of a... a oh, we used to work together a lot. Uh, he was with Whiteman when I was with Whiteman. And then later he had his own band, and I, uh, I did some shows with him, and we were very, we were very old friends, and uh, he hung that uh, cognomen on me, the old groaner. Well, you're the sort of classic crooner, but where does the phrase crooner come from? You've made that your own. Well, I think it started with Valley, Rudy Valley. He was the first one I can remember that uh, was called a crooner. He sang with a megaphone first in front of his band, and then uh, later with radio, with the microphone and the PA system. I think he was the first crooner. Uh, since you began recording, uh, styles of singing have changed very much. Now, what do you think of the modern pop idiom of singing nowadays? What do you think of the Beatles? Oh, I think they're very good. Uh, 
they might change their uh, pace a little, sing different type songs once in a while. I notice on some programs they do everything just the same. Uh, somebody in there is a very talented writer because uh, they took a couple of their songs, the Boston Symphony Orchestra, and uh, made uh, records of them without lyrics. And they were very successful and they sounded very good. So there's a good constructionist in the group. I don't know which one it is. Uh, I think they're, 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 they're very entertaining. The picture they made was a big success. Do you think I don't like their hairdo. <laughs> you don't? The Barber's Union must be really disgruntled about that. Mr. Crosby, will there ever be a time when you retire? Not completely. Uh, I thought of it every once in a while, but uh, I go fishing for a month or go hunting for a month or traveling for a month, and uh, it begins to get dull, and uh, I wonder what's going on, and I get uh, the itch to get my hand back in again. I don't think I could ever completely retire. There's always be something to do, I'm sure. Uh, I can play crotchety old curmudgeons or something. Yes, uh, for sure. As I get older. Well, well, I hope you never do retire. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, John. It's very nice to have this chat and uh, have an opportunity through you to say hello to the uh, viewers of the BBC Two, isn't it?